There are many hypotheses about pre-Columbian contact between the Old World and the New World, ranging from Phoenician or perhaps specifically Carthaginian contact with the Americas, to Japanese contact, to insert idea here based on weird evidence. In only a few special cases are these ideas even taken remotely seriously, but even the more outlandish theories have their backers, including, in some instances, professionals. In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Tekasi Kalitahuaca head, which a handful of archaeologists have argued is possible evidence for some sort of Roman contact with the Americas, even if it was just a one-time event. So what is this thing? And is it actually evidence of some form of contact? Or is it maybe a hoax? Or, perhaps more interestingly, is it actually a Roman artifact which managed to arrive in Mexico on the ruins of a ship? I was initially intending to do an extremely short video on this topic to release on April 1st, because while I had known about this for a while and I had always assumed it was a hoax, and thus figured it would make for a fun, quick debunking type of video, the more I researched this, the more it seemed that, while yes, it could indeed be a hoax, there are aspects of the whole thing that possibly suggest there was maybe something more to it. In other words, it might actually be real. In 1933, Jose Garcia Peon, a Mexican archaeologist, was excavating a burial site located about 40 miles or 60 kilometers west of Mexico City in the Toluca Valley, when he discovered what looked at first glance like a Roman artifact made of terracotta. Cortes and the other Spaniards who would ultimately bring down the Aztec Empire landed on the mainland at Veracruz in 1519, and the burial that was excavated was dated to sometime between 1475 and about 1510, when a fire ravaged the site, which means that the area in question, and thus the artifacts there, are pre-contact, especially if they're beneath the destruction layer. There are numerous large buildings at the site, including several pyramid-shaped structures, and the artifact in question was discovered buried beneath three floors of one of these buildings, along with objects of gold, turquoise, pottery, and bone, in a context which suggests some sort of ritual activity, a practice that was known in the area at the time. And then, about 30 years after the discovery, so in the mid-1960s, it was determined by an art historian specializing in classical history, that this was indeed a Roman artifact dating to the late 2nd or the early 3rd century. So what's going on here? Well, this artifact lay dormant, so to speak, for decades until being brought up again in the 1990s, and since then it has generated a great deal of controversy. And there are six ideas about what this is and how it should be interpreted. The first is that this is quite simply just a hoax. Essentially, there's an old story that the thing was planted at the site as a joke, and it's sort of just never gone away. But it does seem that the individual accused of planting the artifact was actually never present at the site during the time of the excavation, so this is probably false. Or, if he was indeed there, everybody involved with the original excavation in the 1930s has since passed away, so there's no way to fully prove or disprove this interpretation. The second idea, and this is what's going to be important for the other four interpretations, is that due to the dates, it's possible that it is indeed Roman, but it's unlikely. Essentially, thermoluminescence techniques were used to date the terracotta, and the time span for its creation ranges approximately from 875 BC to approximately 1265 AD. So, this argument is that the date range is so wide that although it does encompass the Roman period during its existence, it basically boils down to, so what? Just because Rome existed at some point in the date range does not necessarily mean anything at all. The date range, however, at least makes the idea of the object being Roman possible, and for the sake of argument, let's say that the evaluation of the art historian who looked at this thing in the 1960s is indeed correct, and this dates to the late 2nd or the early 3rd century AD, approximately the Severan period. So how does it get to the Americas? Well, the third idea is that this is, quite simply, a mistake. This is actually a Roman artifact, which, for whatever reason, at the time of the investigation, happened to be in Mexico, and it made it into the collection from this particular dig site, caused a stir, and then it just never made it out of the collection for one reason or another. 
The fourth and fifth ideas are intertwined, and basically it holds that this is either a Roman, or possibly a post-Roman artifact, that is to say early medieval, but that it shows up during the early Spanish colonial period, and somehow made it to the site. The sixth idea is that this is a Roman artifact that did indeed somehow make its way to Mexico prior to the Spanish showing up. So how is this artifact determined to have the date range in question? That's probably a key piece of information for determining whether or not this thing might actually be Roman. Well, the basics of how thermoluminescence dating works and why it's a useful technique for something like pottery is that crystalline minerals are subjected to barrages of ionizing radiation, usually from sunlight but also from the environment in which they're found. And because crystals sometimes have flaws, those energized electrons become trapped in the flaws in the molecular structure of those crystals. When heat is then applied, such as during the firing of pottery in a kiln, the input of that new burst of energy allows some of the electrons to be freed. So when you look at these crystals under a specialized microscope, and the object in question is reheated, the remaining trapped electrons begin to be freed and they're released as light. So if you know the properties of the material from which the object is formed, then you can determine the rate at which those crystals will absorb energy and the rate at which they will release it, and you can calibrate the date at which it was formed based on the frequency of light and the gaps where those electrons should be in the flaws in the crystal. So, for any sort of pottery, this basically means when it was fired. There are, of course, errors that can creep into these calculations, hence the broad date range. And actually, for the supposedly Roman terracotta being discussed in this video, the initial date range was revised after a second round of testing to where it is now accepted, approximately 875 BC to approximately the mid 1200s AD. In other words, we know then that whatever this is, it's not a Spanish colonial creation. It's not possible. So then, is this actually Roman? Well, this is where we get into problems, because the field notes for the excavation in the 1930s don't suggest that the specific area where this was dug up was disturbed in any way. It's possible that this really was just a mistake and that somehow the artifact was mixed in with the other objects after they had been excavated and cataloged. That's perfectly plausible. At least, that's what the detractors argue. Apparently, and unfortunately I have not been able to prove or disprove this because I have not been able to find a copy of the site reports, but apparently, this really is not the case. The excavation in question apparently documented everything with photographic evidence and detailed notes and illustrations of the 21 objects uncovered beneath this pyramid. What if this is indeed the case then? Something that looks like the head of a Roman figurine from the late 2nd or early 3rd century, was deposited beneath several floors of a large building, the deposition of which dates between about 1475 and 1510, with the object in question dating to at least three centuries or so prior to the deposition. How then does it get there? Well, you could certainly argue that a European had the object on them and they buried it, but at the same time we don't have any records, Aztec or otherwise, of the Spanish being in the region prior to the second decade of the 1500s which has led some archaeologists to have researched this whole thing to scratch their heads because it just seems like a really strange timeline. However, because of the dates of both the object and the burial, there is a more interesting interpretation here. The farthest west that we know the Romans traveled, right now anyway, was to the Canary Islands, where evidence of Roman trade and something that maybe looked like a Roman trading outpost was discovered in 1987. This matches up with the textual descriptions found in Pliny and Ptolemy, among others. And we do know that some objects were reused in burial or other ritual purposes in Mesoamerica during the 13th, 14th, and 15th centuries. So, the most radical interpretation of all of this is that maybe this head actually is Roman, and that it perhaps somehow, some way, made it across the Atlantic on the flotsam and jetsam of a shipwreck. It was then discovered and it was subsequently reused. It's not really possible to rule this whole thing out at this time, and this does not necessarily imply any sort of Roman discovery of America, despite what some sensational headlines may claim from time to time. But perhaps even more interesting is that while we have zero evidence for Romans actively engaging in Atlantic exploration or travel, like the Portuguese and the Spanish later would, 
it's possible that this did not get here through a shipwreck that floated across the ocean until it hit land. Instead, perhaps a Roman trading ship was blown off course, and a small band of Romans or their corpses arrived in the Americas, their story being lost to history, with only the terracotta head being evidence of all of it. That, of course, raises the question of what happened to all the other stuff that would have been on the ship, and the nature of this artifact is still debated, but it is fun to speculate about.